hear about that. <laughs> Poison heal, son. I regenerate in response to toxic trauma. Ah! Welcome to the Pokemon Gen 4 abilities tier list. Now normally we get off to a slow start, but it's not going to take us five turns to get our act together. It's not even going to take us five minutes, because there really isn't that much to talk about. Uh, these are all of the abilities added in Generation 4. There's only four T7 of them. <laughs> Shouldn't take us that long. I've color-coded the abilities here uh, into red, blue, and yellow, always a Gen 1-er. Uh, red abilities generally are offensive, uh, help you hit things harder. Uh, blue abilities are defensive, uh, this is kinda, kinda contentious, but they typically help with the defense or like do something when you get hit. Uh, and yellow abilities are just other or utility is how I decided to divide them. Hopefully that makes sense and hopefully these colors aren't too gaudy. What criteria are we using? So just to be clear, this is how good abilities introduced in Gen 4 are, not how good the abilities were in Gen 4. So for example, in the thumbnail, you might've seen a, a very handsome Gliscor uh, representing Poison Heal, pretty good ability. Uh, but in Gen 4, it didn't actually have access to Poison Heal. It only gained that as a hidden ability in Gen 5. Still qualified uh, to model for the thumbnail. So we're gonna be very generous and assume that every ability is in whatever context it's most useful. So for example, Flower Gift, uh, benefits both you and your partner if you have one in a double battle. So we're gonna assume that you're in a double battle. Surely in that case, Flower Gift is great, right? So what are the tiers? Well, we've got four of them, which hopefully should be enough for this number of abilities. At the very top, we have uh, not quite meta-defining, we've changed this to mon-defining. Uh, so these are abilities that are so good they are why you use this Pokemon, or when you think of this Pokemon, you think of this ability. Uh, some of these might also be so powerful that, yes, you would consider them meta-defining, uh, as the tier used to be called. Under that, we have useful, exclamation point. Uh, these abilities are useful, and you're excited about it. Uh, they have very significant effects. Uh, under that, we have not useless, question mark. So these abilities... They do something. <laughs> I guess you have an ability. Uh, and under that we have useless for abilities that are either useless, essentially useless, or actively harmful. All right, we finally got our act together. So we're gonna start by shilling for ourselves. Hi, you're watching the premium version of the Pokemon Gen 4 abilities tier list. Uh, if you would like the chance to uh, influence these lists live, uh, be sure to check out Imported Cheese Fresh, link in the description. Uh, brought to you by uh, the viewers. Wow, is this PBS? Uh, thank thanks to all of you guys, we finally reached uh, 1K subscribers, which means there are premium custom emotes. Uh, so don't miss it. Uh, and also thanks to all of the generous Patreons uh, who you should see on screen now. All right, enough stalling. Uh, I think we actually get started. What better ability to start with than Adapt ability. So adaptability interacts with your stab modifier. A stab is an acronym, stands for same type attack bonus, a really important mechanic that the game doesn't really tell you about. So if you use a move that is of your type, so for example, a fire type using a fire type move, that move is 50% stronger, which is huge. Uh, what adaptability does is it actually applies like a miniature stab boost to your non-stab moves. Again, if we're still a fire type, all of your non-fire moves would then be 25% stronger. Uh, this is actually incredibly powerful uh, because it makes your coverage options much more reliable. Uh, and I, uh, as a theater major, have my lies be 50% stronger because that is not what adaptability does at all. <laughs> so adaptability actually just doubles down on your stab modifier, it actually literally doubles it. Uh, it goes from 50% stronger to 100% stronger. 
That's really, really strong. <laughs> it's incredibly powerful, uh, useful with a big exclamation point. So for example, if you're using a 100 base power move, ordinarily, stab would boost that to 150. But if you have adaptability, it actually goes to 200. Ooh. And at that point, uh, your stab moves are dealing big damage and you're not really going to want to use much else. So one thing that makes stab moves especially good is that you actually have them, right? Uh, your type tends to be connected to your move pool. So if you're a water type, you tend to get the best water moves. Uh, if you're a ground type, you tend to get the best ground moves. And if you're a fire type, you tend to get the best fire moves. Some exceptions apply, of course. A good way to think about the power of adaptability is it makes neutral stab moves the same as super effective non-stab. That's how strong it is. I was very confused about this ability name for the longest time because obviously it does the opposite of what you'd expect adaptability to do, right? You'd expect it to make you better at using moves you're not familiar with, uh, but I checked the Japanese name, which is adaptability, so that didn't help, but what actually helped was uh, a commenter pointed out that the very first Pokemon to get adaptability was Porygon. Porygon has several horrific signature moves that nobody would ever use, the conversion series, that actually allows it to change its type. And when you think of adaptability in that context, oh uh, yeah, it actually does make perfect sense. But on every other Pokemon that gets it, yeah, it's just really confusing. A name that I think would probably make more sense might be something like Adapted or Specialist. So these are all the Pokemon that actually get adaptability. Uh, lots of flexible boys here, I guess, and lots of water types? Uh, that might just be because there are a lot of water types overall, though. Aftermath. Well, usually Aftermath, I feel pretty tired, right? Haha, <laughs> school hard, am I right, guys? Uh, so Aftermath, it's uh, like a mini explosion if your opponent knocks you out with a contact move. So it does a set 25% of your opponent's HP uh, if they knock you out with a contact move. Is that useful? Yeah, I, I don't know if I actually would put an exclamation point on that, though. It might actually be closer to not useless, so... The big downside of this move, right, is you have to die, so it's kind of a consolation prize. Hard countered by Damp, by the way, so you gotta watch out for that. You could sort of think of it as activating Rough Skin or Iron Barbs twice. But only once when you get knocked out and Decidueye trying to prove that it's not the worst Alolan starter by annihilating Aftermath with its hidden ability, Long Reach. It can use contact moves without having to do any math. Also, shoutouts to Fantina, whose gym actually does feature math that you have to do, and she has a Drift Blim, who has Aftermath. Such theming, good job, Game Freak. And apparently, protective pads, it's from a sports scholarship, so no math needed. Uh, protective pads also negates aftermath. Anger point. <laughs> so a very powerful effect. Uh, basically, when you get crit, you get a belly drum boost. So it's not actually plus six attack. It's actually plus 12, because no matter how low your attack is, uh, it'll bring you all the way up to plus six. So obviously that's great, but how do you actually get crit? That's the problem, right? So I think we may be, despite our rage, we don't actually have any exclamation points. It's, it's more of a question mark with not useless. How to get crit? Your opponent could crit you. You might die though, so that's not good. Uh, or in doubles, your partner could crit you. So what you could do is use a fast, weak partner with a multi-hit move and like a crit item equipped to hopefully crit you, activate your anger point, at which point you would start using, I guess, Rock Slide to try and sweep your opponent. Or you could even use a 100% crit move like a Frost Breath or a Storm Throw, I guess, uh, to try and uh, activate Anger Point guaranteed. What is your opponent doing during this? Probably not attacking their own partner, right? They're probably doing something a bit better than this, so... <laughs> Definitely a giga gimmick, but I mean, it's fun, right? I'm currently learning about a strat where you get your opponent to crit you by flinging the berry at them that increases crit chance. Seems really bad, but really fun. 
Anger point, definitely the ability of most of the chatters upset at how impossible it is to actually read all of these abilities. Sorry about that. Uh, you know, it was all just a scheme to get people to comment. Yeah. On the premium about how hard it is to read these. Yeah. D definitely intentional. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try to make it more readable next time. But I also don't think it matters that much because we talk about everything. We're actually going to put Anger Point below Aftermath because Aftermath is kind of guaranteed and Anger Point often doesn't activate, you just die. Ooh, I shudder in anticipation of this next one. Anticipation. So Anticipation alerts you if your opponent has a super effective move against you. It also, in Gen 4, used to also make you shudder if they had explosion or self-destruct, uh, but you no longer shudder in Gen 5 and beyond, I guess because they nerfed explosion and they know that it's bad now. Unfortunately, Anticipation doesn't actually tell you what the move is. It just tells you that one of their moves is super effective against you, which in my opinion is not actually that helpful. This only really would help you if you have a specific weakness that would cause you to get absolutely blown up, so I guess you think this would be kind of good on Ferrothorn, but like, not really? You'd rather have the Iron Barbs. I guess Toxicroak can also uh, do some shuddering, but it dies to a stiff breeze. Uh, also weak to flying, by the way. So there's two things that I think make Anticipation less useful than you might assume. So first is that super effective moves aren't actually that dangerous, right? Your whole in-game playthrough and like most casual players experience is about just like picking super effective moves, but usually you're actually dying to really strong neutral stab moves. Super effective moves are not actually that dangerous, right? The text doesn't kill you. The other thing is that this ability gets worse the better you are. Because the more like meta knowledge you have, the less this ability actually does. So theoretically in game, this is actually useless because you can just look everything up, right? <laughs> you don't need this to tell you anything. And in competitive, Pokemon typically run very specific sets that you actually already know if you're familiar enough with the game. So you don't need anticipation to tell you anything. And if you actually start shuddering, it's because your opponent has some weird gimmick set that's probably worse than the normal set they should be using. Anticipation does actually work with hidden power, which is probably the most unpredictable form of super effective coverage. Whiskash having anticipation is actually very flavorful because uh, in Japan we say that catfish have the ability to predict earthquakes. If only a different water ground type, Swampert, actually had anticipation, maybe we could have avoided the tragedy of Energy Ball Jellicent. Uh, if, if you don't know the legend, uh, apparently a Smogon mod got absolutely blown up. He did not shudder in anticipation of an energy ball from a Jellicent, and he went on a rampage just banning people until eventually Admin stepped in and used a super effective ban against him. Never forget. Anticipation fans just shuddering in their seats because uh, we're actually going to move it below anger point. I don't think it does that much. And all of the mechanics that make Anticipation not that useful are foreshadowing for Forewarn. Uh, only three uses of four there. So Forewarn actually does tell you what move your opponent has. It reveals to you their highest base power move. That is generally, actually I'm just going to put this in useless because you know what their highest base power move is, right? Guys, I think this Excadrill might try to earthquake me. Just a wild postulation though. Who knows if that's actually true? What if, hypothetically, just for the sake of argument, a fighting type used close combat? The smallest of niches for forewarn is if your opponent has illusion, you might get forewarned about a strong move that they shouldn't have. So that'll tip you off to them being a faker, but there's much more effective ways to see through the illusion disguise. Uh, one of them is having eyes and looking at the team preview. Oh, they have a Zoroark, so one of their Pokemon is going to be disguised. Bad dreams. I mean, just insert your personal nightmare here, right? This is the signature ability of Darkrai. So Darkrai is mostly interested in just killing you, uh, and Bad Dreams kind of helps with that. So Bad Dreams is half a nightmare, <laughs> uh, but it's always active. So what happens is Darkrai sends you to the Shadow Realm with an 80% accuracy Dark Void, and then you lose 
an eighth of your HP a turn if you're asleep and Dark Rise on the field. That's pretty significant chip damage. And it's way, way, way better than Nightmare because you don't actually have to spend a turn on it. Uh, R.I.P. Dark Void. <laughs> it used to be sweet dreams, but after the Dark Void nerf, nothing but bad dreams. Imagine having a signature move that puts people to sleep, but your better option is actually Hypnosis. Honestly, an actual loaf of Dark Rye might be more effective in combat than Dark Rye trying to use the nerf to Dark Void. Mm. You wouldn't download a stat boost. Actually, you would, and about 50% of the time, uh, you're going to be getting a pretty good deal. The download is pretty good, so how it works is when you switch in, uh, it boosts either your attack or your special attack by one stage based on the lower defensive stat of your opponent. So if your opponent has lower defense, you gain attack, and if your opponent has lower special defense, you gain special attack. So on Porygon, when you get special attack, this is really good. Uh, it's basically like Intrepid Sword, right? Intrepid Sword always boosts attack on a Pokemon that I hear is pretty good. Uh, just a rumor though. Unfortunately, 50% of the time on Porygon, this is kind of a dud, because if you get the attack raise, well, that does nothing. This is actually much better on Genesect, who's the only other download Pokemon, and who actually can use both sides of the attacking spectrum. So either way, you're pretty happy with the download boost on Genesect. The biggest downside of download is that you can't really control which boost you get. Generally, you know which of your opponent's defensive stats is lower, but when that opponent is on the field might not be when you want to send out your download Pokemon for the appropriate boost, so that makes this ability kind of hard to use. Just some bonus download trivia that's never going to matter, but in case of a tie between the foe's defense and special defense, Download increases special attack, so I guess you come out on top there. And during a double or triple battle, Download will calculate the average defense and special defense by adding the stats of all opposing Pokemon and determine the lowest stat between both averages. If you want to run the canonical Porygon Z set, it's a Download Sharpen uh, to take advantage of physical download boosts, both conversions 1 and 2, and then of course your signature move Tri Attack, right? Complete set. Dry skin, this ability is ashy as hell! Uh, dry skin's really, really good. Uh, I think better than you would think. I don't know if it's mon defining, but it's pretty close, so... What dry skin does is, well, first it has some negatives attached, so... If it's, uh, sunny outside, then you actually, like, start losing health each turn, and you don't quite gain a fire weakness, you actually take 25% more damage from fire moves. What's the trade-off? Well, in rain, you get super rain dish. Uh, instead of leftovers recovery, you get one eighth of your health a turn, which is huge, as we'll see on another ability later on. And perhaps even more importantly than that, uh, you are better than immune to water. You actually absorb water. So most of the time, this actually ends up being water absorb plus. It's water absorb stapled to super rain dish. Wow. And it does have downside, right, which we talked about, but just don't be in a situation where the downside actually matters, right? You wouldn't use this on a sun team, so that part is completely irrelevant. And generally, taking more fire damage also doesn't matter because it's raining, right? If you plan correctly, I think you're very happy with your skin being ashen. Get that lotion. And by lotion, I mean rain. So this ability is both very good on rain teams and also very good against rain teams where attacks get so strong that it's not enough to just resist them. You sort of have to be immune. So Kyogre hates it when you don't follow a skincare routine. So does Dracovish. You know an ability is pretty good when you'd actually consider using Parasect because it's got some dry skin. Filter. Hashtag with filter, uh, one of the best abilities if you intend to enter your pictures into the Alola Photo Club. So filter, it's functionally the same as solid rock, so we'll do that at the same time. Definitely solid abilities, but a, a bit underwhelming. So what filter and solid rock do is that they reduce super effective damage you take. Well, that's pretty good. Reduce it by 50%, I wish. Uh, reduce it by 25%. That's not nothing. Uh, there might be times where you're barely hanging in there and you're glad you installed that filter or that you're made of solid rock. But generally, if you're Mr. Mime filtering that 
choice band bullet punch, you still die. Uh, and if you're Rhyperior filtering that surf, you still die. <laughs> Definitely more effective on Rhyperior, where a super effective, like maybe fighting move, or that very same bullet punch that just killed Mr. Mime, uh, might actually be doing less damage to you because of your solid rock. I think Mega Aggron also has filter, which is pretty useful. I just wish that the numbers on filter were a bit higher. I've actually been using filter this whole time because this thing right here is called a pop filter. And the filters are out of control, I've got a coffee filter, and if you think that this bit is lame and boring, I can filter the comments. So you're just screaming into the void, hopefully not the dark void. Last thing about filter, if you say that you have no filter, that just means you're a jerk. <laughs> I have no filter. I tell it how it is. No offense, but I just speak what's on my mind, and that's why people can't handle me. Alright, that's enough. Flower gift. More like flower grift. Can I flower re-gift this? I don't want it. It's not that bad. So flower gift is the signature ability of the Cherim line. In sunny weather, it boosts your attack and your speed. No, no that would actually be pretty good. Uh, your defense. I mean, okay, that would make sense. You know, usually physical stats are tied together. No, it boosts your attack and your special defense. What a weird combo. Uh, so the big thing about flower gift I guess what makes it actually a gift is that in doubles, it also boosts your partner. So it kind of turns you into a stat battery for your partner. That's almost useful. <laughs> the big thing is you have to sort of think about the cost of using this, which is you then have to use Cherim, who sucks. And if you're using this in Sun, that means you also have to use a drought setter and the drought setters suck. <laughs> So that's a third of your team that is already useless, so you're playing 4v6. And if you're using this, you're in a double battle, right? And double battle is usually only four Pokemon, so that's half of your team that's useless. No thanks! And all this discussion about Flower Gift doesn't really matter because they're sold out, right? Has, has anybody actually seen a Cherim? I'm looking for one, I'm trying to complete this quest. Hello? And if you're trying to do a meme max damage calculation with Rollout Shuckle, uh, then Flower Gift is actually part of that, since it's a boost you can't get otherwise. Frisk! So Frisk has a very straightforward effect. It reveals your opponent's held item. So unlike Forewarn and Anticipation revealing one of your opponent's moves that you probably already knew, Frisk uh, revealing your opponent's one held item that you probably didn't know is actually very important uh, because several strong Pokemon might have multiple items that they might consider and the way you deal with them changes drastically depending on what item they're holding. So typically, you don't know that your opponent has a choice scarf until they've already killed you <laughs> because they outsped you when you didn't expect it. Uh, but if you frisk them, that'll never happen to you. So this is actually very useful information. Frisk is even useful in single player, because if you're hunting for items on wild Pokemon, instead of catching them all or using Thief, just have a Frisk Pokemon, and you can see if they're holding the item you want, and then you can catch them or steal it. Useful. We gotta talk about the name of this ability, because it's really weird. So in Japanese, it's Omitoshi, which is something like unobstructed sight, or like true sight. Uh, in English, I probably would have gone with perceptive, which is why this is generally on Pokemon that have some sort of augmented ability to see, right? You've got a lone executor who's just kind of peering down and seeing that you're wearing a lovely choice band. The English word frisk, I don't think is ever good. <laughs> uh, friskies is a brand of cat food. I guess if you're getting frisky with someone, hopefully you're both having a good time, but in general, the verb frisk uh, means to touch someone generally in a way they're not comfortable with as you're searching them for items, so not the word I would have chosen. Uh, and I, I am from New York City, which has a famously awful policy called stop and frisk, which gives law enforcement the ability to stop and frisk you if they determine that you look suspicious. How do you think they determine who looks suspicious? Take a wild guess. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Gluttony. So definitely the ability of all those wonderful Twitch reactors who add so much to the content by sitting in the corner and stuffing their faces and not saying anything. <laughs> True. I hate reaction videos.
The actual ability, Gluttony, it's surprisingly useful. So what it does is it causes you to activate your pinch berries at 50% instead of 25. So one of the main challenges of pinch berries, despite them having powerful effects, is that you generally die while trying to actually activate them unless you do like substitute strategies, at which point you're about to die. <laughs> So Gluttony allows you to get access to your berry at a much more reasonable health total <laughs> when you might actually be able to use the boost. And perhaps more importantly, 50% is the health total that Belly Drum brings you to. So if you Belly Drum with Gluttony, then with your Slack Berry boost, you're ready to go. Uh, I, I did this with Lanoon in Gen 4 Never Used to reach number one on the Never Used ladder. What a battler! Uh, Gluttony is pretty good. I, I think it definitely goes in useful. It just makes all of these pinch berry strategies a lot more reliable, and reliability generally pretty good. Noticeably better in Gen 7 when everyone at Game Freak became a farmer and they decided to buff berries through the roof, and then they came to their senses, nerfed berries, and also accordingly that nerfed Gluttony, but it's still pretty good. Heat proof! A bit of a misnomer because it's literally not heat proof. This is most of the time just bad flash fire because flash fire actually makes you heat proof, right? It negates the fire move entirely. This is also bad thick fat because thick fat gives you resistance to both fire and ice. Heat proof only gives you a resistance to fire, but it's not strictly worse because apparently it also d reduces damage from burn. But most moves that burn you are actually fire types, so Flash Fire does a better job at that anyway. But if you happen to get burned by Scald or Tri Attack, you will only take 3% damage a turn. Wow! Uh, we're like dunking on Heatproof a bit, but it's actually pretty good. <laughs> I think the only Pokemon that has this is the Bronzong line. It's actually incredibly useful because Bronzong's other ability, Levitate, is much better. <laughs> So everybody automatically assumes you have Levitate, because why wouldn't you? And if you have Heatproof, it's basically for free, because your opponent is not going to Earthquake you, they assume you have Levitate, and you get to resist fire moves anyway. Yay! <laughs> there are downsides to trying to be cheeky like that, because you can't actually switch in on Earthquake, because you don't actually Levitate, and uh, you will still take damage from entry hazards. But, it, it is a fun, like, trick you can try and pull, to, to get two abilities. Honey Gather. Literally just use this ability. I think this is a very clear candidate for uh, Mon Defining. Uh, so what Honey Gather does is after battle, uh, it gives you the chance to pick up honey. Uh, now you can then sell this honey to the shop and you can do this forever and ever. So this is literally just an infinite money cheat that completely breaks the game wide open. I can't, I can't no, this sucks. <laughs> this move does nothing, it's so awful. Oh, bother. Don't bother with this ability. So Honey Gather allows you to gather honey after battle. What does honey actually do? So honey is tied to the worst catching mechanic of all time, which is the Gen 4 honey trees. You can slather honey on trees and six hours later you get to catch a worm pool. Wow. In Gen 6, you could use it to immediately begin a horde battle. That's almost useful, except you can also do that with Sweet Scent, which isn't even consumable. And the worst part of all of this is that you can just buy honey. You don't need this ability to get honey. I'm not gonna stick a combi in my team just so I can get that not so sweet honey. If you compare this ability to pick up, this ability should definitely be put down. It's horrible. Combi's my Pokemon. I'll do it. Combi has just got to be one of the most miserable Pokemon ever, right? Because if you're a male combi, you're doomed to life as a Sigma male just gathering honey until the end of your days, never being able to evolve. And if you're female, you get to evolve into da, 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 Vespiquin, wow. A Pokemon that Game Freak cares so little about that even though it's in Gen 8, they still Pokemon snapped one of its signature moves. Why? Rubombi actually has the option to also gather honey or the option of using an actual good ability, Shield Dust. Use Shield Dust. Teddy Ursa can also use Honey Gather or good Honey Gather, also known as Pickup, or Quick Feet, also known as the correct choice. For two tier lists in a row. Not the bees. <laughs> Not the bees! Hydration. Very useful. So what hydration does is every single turn in rain, 
Uh, it heals your status condition. So essentially, if you're in rain, you cannot be status. It's actually a little bit better than that, because what you can do is you can rest to fully heal your HP, and then if it's raining and you have hydration, you wake up immediately. So it basically gives you super recover uh, if you're on a rain team, which is actually very powerful. It makes you very difficult to kill if you have any sort of bulk. So I think we're going to go ahead and put this uh, here-ish. It's pretty good. Uh, and it's more evidence that Game Freak just hates grass types and hates sun because it's just better than Leaf Guard in pretty much every way. <laughs> so Leaf Guard has a similar effect. What Leaf Guard does is that if it's sunny, you can't be statused. Now that sounds pretty similar to hydration curing status at the end of each turn, but it's worse in several important ways. The first thing is if you get status and then it becomes sunny, well, Leaf Guard does nothing. It doesn't save you. The other minus is that the rest interaction doesn't work. Initially, you would just go to sleep and then just stay asleep. Leaf Guard doesn't wake you up, but now you just can't rest at all. So yeah, no rest for grass types. Not that I would trust a type with five weaknesses to guard me anyway. Awful. Why does Game Freak hate grass and sun? And of course, this is the hidden ability of Chikorita, right? Can't give it anything good. So I think the only situation where Leaf Guard is actually better is if your opponent is faster and thunder waves you. You might lose your turn before hydration can cure you. But if you have Leaf Guard, you never get paralyzed in the first place. And I guess the same thing also applies to getting frozen. Leaf Guard is still way worse. Ice Body. So this is a weather shifted version of... Rain Dish, so Rain Dish gave you a bonus leftovers recovery under rain, very useful. Ice Body gives you that effect under hail. Yeah, Ice Body, more like Ice Bodied, a courtesy of Chatter Frosted Flakes, very thematic. Yeah, this is a defensive ability on ice types. So you already know it's not turning out well. It's not useless, like the effect is good, but you're trying to stall with ice types. Good luck. <laughs> it's really hard to stall when everything does double damage to you. Like the best user of this is Walrain, whose name is a complete lie, right? Just every part of it, because it's not walling anything. It's also not even raining, it's hailing, right? Stop these lies. Oh, but it's not rain as in the weather, it's rain as in like a ruler. Okay, well, it's not raining over anything either. It's wool rind time! And also time to go to the next ability. Iron Fist! <laughs> so generally, the more narrow a boost is, the stronger it is. So, for example, Strong Jaw uh, only affects biting moves, but you get a very big boost. You get 50%. Very significant. Tough Claws boosts all contact moves. So that's a wider boost. But you also get less of a boost, you get 30%. Even narrower than Tough Claws is Iron Fist, so that means that the boost is 20%. What? <laughs> That's... Why is it so weak? I mean, it's something. It's not bad. I will take 20% more damage, yes, but this should be like 50%. It should at least be equal to Tough Claws, right? Abilities don't have to actually be fair, but let's get some semblance of parity, come on. There is a wide arsenal of punching moves, so this ability is definitely good. Uh, you, you can mock punch a little bit harder with your monkey. Uh, you can make Ledian... No, never mind. <laughs> Honestly, with how mediocre the boost is, I'm not really sure these fists are made of iron. Maybe like... tin? The translation of Iron Fist itself is fine, but because the translation of some of the moves are wonky, there's some weird interaction. So Sucker Punch in Japanese is just Ambush, so that's why it doesn't get an Iron Fist boost. But Meteor Mash is Comet Punch, so Meteor Mash does get a boost. And also the English move Comet Punch does. Great translations, guys. So here's a quick view of all of the Iron Fist Pokemon, uh, and the moves they can learn that actually get boosted by Iron Fist. So you can, you can pause and look at this. So just everything about Pokemon and Iron Fist is kinda underwhelming and confusing. But like, what do you expect when they tried to adapt Hekken, which means Iron Fist, into Pokken, which means 
Po Fist. I don't get it. Uh, next ability, uh, Klutz. Oh no, I dropped my glasses. What a Klutz. Ooh, Butterfingers. Butterfingers. What an interesting character trait. I'm sure characters defined entirely by their clumsiness will be so interesting. Ugh. Okay, Klutz. So this prevents all effects from your held item. Okay, but held items are really good, so generally this is a downside, but this also prevents the negative effects of items that you can give to your opponent. So that's what you'd actually use this for. You'd give yourself a bad item, and because of Klutz, it doesn't actually weaken you as you trick to give it to your opponent. Is that good? No, but I think it does get a question mark on the uselessness. <laughs> you would rather just power yourself up with an item than try to weaken your opponent by giving them a bad one. Because that's usually not worth a turn and whatever item you would have had instead boosting you. This used to actually not negate the speed drop of Iron Ball, which was really weird, uh, but now it actually does. So it does actually prevent all negative effects from your item. Like, we can put this above, like, I don't know, Flower Gift? Like, there are things you can do with this, like giving a support Pokemon an Assault Vest is, is really annoying, but you can basically do the same thing by giving them a choice item using a Pokemon that's actually good and doesn't have Klutz. So this ability actually gets better as items get worse. So if theoretically one day they add really <laughs> sticky barb that instantly kills you, then I guess Klutz is gonna become mon-defining, but for now, it's generally not worth it. I guess it is very flavorful that if you are a Klutz, uh, you can't actually be a shot put champion and use fling to clonk your opponent on the head with iron ball because uh, Klutz actually prevents you from using fling from generation 5 onwards. Magic Guard. An ability so powerful that the SCP Foundation was created to try and contain it. SCP-036, our very first mon-defining ability. So Magic Guard is cheating. I, I don't know how else to describe it, which is pretty funny because the description makes it sound like it doesn't do anything. So the description of Magic Guard is, this Pokemon only takes damage from attacks. It sounds like a troll, right? Like, oh, thanks. I didn't know that I, I took damage from attacks. But what this actually means is that you are immune to all indirect damage. All of it. Anything that is not your opponent actually attacking you directly with a move that has base power does nothing. So this negates all entry hazards, uh, it negates all passive damage from Leech Seed, it negates all passive damage from status conditions like Burn or Toxic, uh, this negates all recoil, whether from your own moves or from Life Orb, uh, this negates all passive damage from a Hail or from Sandstorm, Everything! This is so crazy! All the Pokemon who can get Magic Guard love it. It's insane. This might be the best defensive ability in the game. One thing about Magic Guard is that if you status yourself with a Toxic Orb or Flame Orb, which you might want to do, it's basically also all of the status immunity abilities like Insomnia, Water Veil, Limber, because if you're statused, you can't get statused again, right? So you might actually want to inflict yourself with a status to prevent your opponent from putting you to sleep. Just another in the long, long, long list of benefits. Honestly, when you have Magic Guard, it just feels like you're playing by a different set of rules. Like, the normal mechanics of the game just don't apply to you. Like, oh, excuse me, sir, you're, you're supposed to take this much damage under these circumstances? Uh, no. No, I don't think I will. Magic Guard also prevents damage from Curse, so if you think like a voodoo doll is gonna save you from Magic Guard Clefable, think again, it does nothing. It also used to prevent full paralysis? Which was really weird, that, that actually didn't make sense and they reverted that, so you can still lose your turn to paralysis if you have Magic Guard. I don't know why it stopped in the first place. Uh, but do keep in mind, uh, that the attack reduction from burn still goes through magic guard. So if you're pre-gen 6 Clefairy and you're still a normal type and you want to use, like, uh, g facade, 
uh, by statusing yourself, uh, use a Toxic Orb and not a Flame Orb, because Flame Orb will actually reduce your attack. I think the only indirect damage in the game that can actually affect you through Magic Guard is Struggle. Because we are all on the Struggle bus. Nobody gets a free pass. Not even SCP-036. One-winged Clefangel. Horrifying. Mold Breaker. For some reason, this has an announcement? <laughs> so you know that your opponent has this. It'll say, like, Excadrill breaks the mold. Okay, uh, it's pretty good. So what Mold Breaker does is... It negates your opponent's ability while you're attacking them. So any defensive ability, any blue ability, uh, just does nothing as you're attacking. Probably most famously, Levitate. So Rotom hates this ability because Rotom sees that you break the mold and then you shake the ground and it dies somehow. <laughs> uh, there's tons of instances where ignoring your opponent's defensive ability is really useful. And that's what Mold Breaker does. But notably, and very weirdly, it is only active while attacking. So say, for example, your opponent has Limber, which prevents paralysis and also cures paralysis, and you, like, thunder punch them and paralyze them. As soon as you're done attacking, so as soon as your turn is over, their paralysis heals. Very weird. Of course, we have to mention that Rotom Fan doesn't care if you break the mold. And of course, this ability just devastates Shuckle, the mold Pokemon. So be careful if you're a Shuckle fan. Motor Drive. I don't have a driver's license, but I'm still authorized to take a motor drive. This ability is pretty good. So it's sort of an alternate Volt Absorb, where if you get hit by an electric attack, you take no damage, and instead of healing, you gain plus one speed. That's pretty useful. Unfortunately, you can't quite control uh, if your opponent hits you with an electric move, uh, unless you're in a double battle, in which case you can discharge and kind of boost yourself. Give yourself that motor drive. This is one of the most overhyped abilities ever because it debuted with Electivire, and people back in the day were going crazy. They were like, oh, insane strategy. You send out Gyarados, and then you, you trick him because you switch to Electivire. This was the Garavire strategy. Then you get the motor drive, and you run through your opponent with your amazing super effective coverage. What actually happened was you didn't get the motor drive boost because people saw right through this, and then you just kind of failed to kill anything because you don't have a good physical stab move. Womp womp. The ability itself is fine. We're going to put it uh, here. At worst, it's an electric immunity. That's pretty good. Just to highlight how interconnected things are, this ability is worse because Pikachu exists and Game Freak insists that Volt Tackle has to be locked to Pikachu. So because of that, Electivire doesn't get a good physical electric move and thus Motor Drive is worse. Thanks a lot, Pikachu. Multi-type. Not what you would expect the god of Pokemon to have, right? So multi-type is the ability of Arceus, creator of all Pokemon. And it's actually sticky hold plus stickier hold. So muckiness is closer to godliness than you might have thought. So multi-type is the mechanic that allows Arceus to change its type based on the plate it's holding. And on top of that, it prevents your held outing from being lost. A lot of the time, Arceus doesn't actually change its type because it just wants to have stab on extreme speed and also the boost of an item that's not a plate. So multi-type is, is kind of underwhelming, <laughs> but it's not bad. I sort of wish Arceus's type switching worked like it does in Legends Arceus, where as long as you're attuned to the Legend plate, using Judgment is what switches your type. And you switch to something that always strikes your opponent super effectively, which is really cool. In Pokemon Conquest, Arceus has a different ability called Omnipotence, which is basically a bunch of different abilities mashed together. I think you heal at the start of your turn, occasionally you just dodge attacks from enemies, you can traverse certain terrain that you couldn't otherwise, and also your attacks will never be negated by your enemy. You can always damage your opponent no matter what with your judgment. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's also like really overpowered, but Here's a take, maybe the god of all Pokemon should be a little overpowered. I, I think that's okay. <laughs> Multi-type is not overpowered at all, it's very middling. A multi-type makes Arceus very versatile. I mean, it's more that 
It's Arceus. <laughs> so multi-type does give Arceus a lot of flexibility, right? It can be any type, but that flexibility comes at a very high price because you're always locked to the plate of that type. So if you're using Steel Arceus, your opponent knows, oh, you have a steel plate. So you're also like automatically giving your opponent frisk. You tell them what item you have. No guard. Who needs defense? <laughs> no guard is a really fun and really powerful ability. So this was the signature ability of the Machamp line. Uh, and it pairs really well with a certain type of flying fist dynamic punch. So what no guard actually does is it makes it so that all moves used by you and also against you are 100% accurate. So this is symmetrical, but it's really not, right? Because you know that you have no guard, so you're going to use risky low accuracy moves, except now they're guaranteed, and your opponent doesn't know they're going to face a Pokemon with no guard, so they're not going to run those risky moves. So you benefit disproportionately from no guard. It's very good. <laughs> I love this ability. Stone Miss? Never heard of it. I use a move called Stone Edge. It always hits. Wow. You can also use this with Choice Specs Machamp for some fun. Enemies won't expect that, I'll tell you that much. I would put this in Mon Defining because No Guard Machamp was kind of everywhere in Gen form, but nowadays, overall, Guts is probably a bit better. But it is a very strong ability. And unfortunately, Game Freak had the foresight, a bad move by the way, uh, to not allow anybody with no guard to actually access a one hit KO move. But just be careful because one hit KO moves will still hit you, so that's like an in-game thing you gotta be careful about. Normalize bad abilities. Like normalize, this ability sucks. It is honestly actively detrimental most of the time. So what normalize does, it's the signature ability of Del Caddy and it makes all of your moves normal. Normal is a bad type. Why would you ever want to do this? So they did buff this ability. It used to just make all your moves normal, but now it makes them normal and slightly powers them up. So it's like all of those eight abilities, like Aerialate, except instead of taking normal and making it good, it takes something good and makes it bad. Wow, the smallest upside of this is that it used to let you Thunder Wave ground types because now Thunder Wave was normal. Wow, ground types tend to be kind of slow anyway. There's other ways to paralyze them. Do you care so much about paralyzing ground types that you're gonna run Del Caddy with Thunder Wave? No, to put into perspective how much worse this is than the eight abilities, the eight abilities only affect your one normal move, probably return, right? Normalize affects all four of your moves, so you can only ever use normal moves. So you literally just cannot touch ghosts, and you're just very underwhelmed most of the rest of the time. Horrific. What if I change the description to Del Caddy gets stabbed from all moves? That's a much nicer way to phrase it, I guess. Like, honestly, this move is so bad, it's a candidate for trying to skill swap it onto your opponent to make them worse. Why won't you die? Poison heal, son. I regenerate in response to toxic damage. Yeah, this is mod defining. This ability is obscene. So what poison heal does is very straightforward. It just inverts the damage from poison. Instead of taking an eighth of your health a turn, you regenerate an eighth of your health a turn. This is way, way stronger than it seems, and I think it already seems pretty good. This ability is so good, you can take a Pokemon that has 130 base attack and 70 base speed and legitimately say, uh, yeah, I think I should try a Subseed set. You cannot die with this unless you get killed in one shot. Disgusting. Gliscor with this? Invincible. Invincible. Ice punch me, come on. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of chilly. Is that the best you got? Ice beam me. Come on, I can take it. Brrr. Nowadays, Berloom might actually run Technician because that's also really, really strong and helps Berloom to actually kill you with its attack stat. But Gliscor is defined by this ability. It is so good. We determined that Leftovers was the best item in the game, and Poison Heal is better than double Leftovers. 
because even if your opponent smacks you with knockoff, you still heal, assuming you at least had one turn for your Toxic Orb to activate. And because you're poisoned, you can't be afflicted by other status. One minor, minor downside of Poison Heal that actually also applies to Magic Guard is that it doesn't actually prevent poison damage outside of battle. So if you're playing a generation where you actually do take poison damage outside of battle, that still happens. <laughs> Which is really annoying and kind of strange. I don't know why it works like that. Aw, oh, quick feet. Wombo combo, that ain't Swellow, because Swellow has guts, so, okay, so, Quick Feed is sort of an alternate guts, where if you're status, uh, your speed increases, which is pretty useful. Uh, you just gotta be really careful, because uh, Quick Feet does not have the attack negation that guts does, so don't burn yourself to get this. You pretty much have to use Toxic Orb. Uh, it's very useful, uh, if you're a bear named Ursaring, you probably love Quick Feet. Uh, it's one of the ways that can uh, actually get you up to speed to sweep. If you have, you know, Toxic Orb, Swords Dance, and Quick Feet, stuff's gonna be taking a lot of damage from that stab facade. Can't wait for Ursa Luna to enter the game. Uh-oh. Okay, it looks like Ursa Luna doesn't actually get Quick Feet. Whoa, just guts. Okay, so you're still gonna die. Unfortunately, there is no Paralysis Orb, but I think you still might opt to use Toxic Orb because Quick Feet does not do anything about the full Paralysis chance. And I think I would rather take minor damage each turn rather than have a 25% chance to get absolutely wrecked. <laughs> Reckless. Pretty weird name for an ability that lets you wreck more. <laughs> so Reckless powers up all of your recoil moves uh, and recoil moves are pretty narrow. So how much of a boost is it? Say it with me, 20, 20%. Uh, so <laughs> we're just gonna put it with Iron Fist. It affects fewer moves, but I mean 20% boost, I'll take it. It doesn't actually increase the amount of recoil you take directly. There's no penalty for having Reckless, but you deal more damage. So you'll just naturally take more recoil. It's worth it, generally. If you're using a, a recoil move, yes, the damage is a downside, but having your opponent survive because you used a weaker move is more of a downside, so you're generally okay taking recoil damage. So here's all of the reckless Pokemon and the recoil moves they learn. Uh, so if you're in the insurance industry, uh, pay close attention, because these are the Pokemon you don't want to give policies to. I guess there's no recoil version of weakness policy, but... Uh, Reckless also affects moves with crash damage, which means uh, both of the jump kicks. Rivalry. Signature ability of your rival. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Chokes her hearts. <laughs> ah, so it has both upside and downside. What rivalry does is, if you are the same gender as your opponent, you get 25% more attack, but if your opponent is the opposite gender, you actually get minus 25 attack. So on average, this ability does nothing, right? <laughs> but you can of course choose to fight opponents that have the same gender as you, so you get more power, but that, that's pretty difficult. Really hard to manipulate in competitive. Haxorus used this for a while, and if you get the 25% boost, it's kind of like half an intrepid sword, so we're not quite intrepid and we're not a sword, so I guess it's like wary axe? I, I'd definitely rather have intrepid sword. <laughs> Uh, certain Pokemon that you might have seen in a double battle once or twice are gender locked to always be male, so in that sense, you can count on them being your rival, which is very nice. Apparently, Beautifly gets rivalry. Beautifly, I've got bad news for you. Wh whoever your opponent is, they've beaten you. Beautifly sucks. <laughs> and of course, in line with making your rivals nicer and nicer, uh, beginning in Gen 6, this ability was renamed to Friendship. <laughs> Scrappy. Can't spell Scrappy without Crappy. Ah, it's not that bad, but I just wanted to say that. Uh, it's pretty useful, so what Scrappy does is it allows you to hit ghost types with normal and fighting moves. That's pretty useful. You kind of just wish ghost wasn't that overpowered or that normal didn't suck that much. This would be really good if it was folded into Normalize, which I think would actually be fair, right? If Normalize just had the bonus Scrappy effect. But yeah, Scrappy is generally pretty good. Uh, if you have Scrappy, you can go ahead and use normal and fighting moves without worrying about your opponent ever being immune to them. But you could also just use a different Pokemon that uses moves that Pokemon aren't immune to. This is much better on fighting types, because uh, fighting is overall just a much better type. 
I wish I had Scrappy, cause then I would never get ghosted. So Mega Lopunny, probably the best user of this RIP Megas, but in general fighting types that have this really like it. Speaking of fighting types, just for kicks, Scrappy also blocks Intimidate, because why not? <laughs> Other things about Scrappy, I guess there's a word game called Scrabble, and there's a horrible, horrible food item called Scrapple. Only Americans will know, thankfully, we've kept it contained within our borders. I think it's just made from a bunch of, like, leftovers. They, like, try to sell it, and like, here you go, Scrapple. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like evil spam. I wouldn't eat Scrapple, but I would eat a hot dog. So maybe I'm just a hypocrite. Japanese name is Spunk. I guess they didn't call it Spunk in English because in England, Spunk describes something other than character. <laughs> maybe related to Megalopunny. That's the end of this analysis. The plan is simple. We double our stat boosts. That's a really powerful effect. Uh, why isn't this ability that good? Oh, uh, this is why. <laughs> the Pokemon that get simple suck. But hey, spending one turn on a stat boost to get double benefit is really, really powerful. Uh, if this was on any Pokemon that actually were any good at all otherwise, it would probably be busted. Uh, you can simple beam to give simple to something, but usually that's not worth a move. Also, what a... Sinister move? You're basically like lobotomizing them, right? Oh, it's kind of uncomfortable. Swoobat using Calm Mind with this is okay, but none of these Pokemon are tearing up the meta, even with doubled stat boost. It basically just makes them not awful. So ability itself, really good. Definitely gets put in useful, but its users just kind of suck. <laughs> and keep in mind that Simple does also affect negative status inflicted by your opponent, so you lose uh, double the attack from Intimidate. Gotta be careful about that. Is Simple Beam some kind of Japanese pun? I don't know. Let's see. I'm assuming it's not Tanjun Kosen. That would be really weird. Simple Beam. Okay. <laughs> well, there, that was simple. Skill Link. So this gives you max hits on every multi-hit move. So if you don't get all five hits, it really is a skill issue. You just weren't good enough. Getting all five hits with multi-hit moves makes them really powerful. You end up with base powers like over 100 with the upside of being able to hit through substitutes or sturdy. That's really powerful. Uh, is it mon-defining powerful? I don't think so, but it, it certainly is good. Most Pokemon that have Skill Link do choose to run it to end up dealing overall big deeps. Uh, best user is definitely Cloyster, who goes ahead and uh, smashes its shell a bit uh, and then skills you to death with several of its multi-hit moves. It can Ice Skull Spear you, it can Rock Blast you. How would you like to die? Those are your options. It might also hit you with like Shell Blade, I guess, or Surf. I think I said Shell Blade, but it's actually called Razor Shell. So Slow Start, definitely the signature ability of these streams. It usually takes about an hour before we start actually ranking things. Uh, is this the worst ability in the franchise? It might be. It's really, really, really bad. So what Slow Start does, it's a negative ability, and it halves your speed and attack uh, for several turns. How many turns? One turn? Uh, no. Two turns? Uh, no. Three? No. Uh, four? No. It's five. Five turns. Five turns is an eternity. You are never actually getting your act together and getting access to your full stats on Regigigas, who is the only Pokemon, thankfully, that has this ability. Like, to put into perspective how bad Slow Start is, if this was one turn, it would still make Regigigas unusable. I just don't understand why this ability exists, because is Regigigas supposed to be bad? Isn't it supposed to be the strongest of the Regis? Which isn't saying much, because the Regis kind of suck, but like, it's supposed to be like towing continents, right? Why does it need to have a weakening ability? Keep in mind that not only does this ability make you worse, it's not making you better. That's an extra downside of negative abilities. It's that they're not actually buffing you. They're taking the place of a good ability. Unspeakably bad, and yet we are speaking about it because the people must know. Two dollars from Blue Crimson. Name one good thing about Slow Start or New Tier. I think we need a new tier. Reggie Gigas!
I mean, maybe Regigigas is so weak because it's not actually the master of the Regis. Truant still worse? Absolutely not. Because with Truant, you get your power right away. And you can always just switch on your Truant turn. But obviously, yeah, Truant's also horrible, but I think it's better than Slow Start. Sniping's a good job, mate. It's not a good ability, though. <laughs> Uh, very bottom of useful. So what Sniper does is it increases your crit modifier, but they nerfed crits and they didn't buff Sniper. Thanks. So there's two issues with crit strategies. One is that crits just don't do enough damage anymore. And two is that they're not reliable asterisk. So you can make them reliable, but it's not really worth it. So in Gen 6, that's when they reduced crit damage from double to 1.5. But at the same time, they also made it easier to get crits if you actually boost your crit rate. So all you have to do is reach plus three, and that means you get guaranteed crits. So if you do scope lens and focus energy, that's plus three. So that means you're always critting. And with Sniper, which gives you now a 2.25 boost, that's actually better than if you were doing, say, uh, a nasty plot, right? To, uh, plus, to increase your offensive stat by plus two. Pretty much the only Pokemon that actually does this, and I say they do it, but not really, it's still a gimmick, is Kingdra. Because what you can do is you can scope lens and you can focus energy for guaranteed crits. And then you can spam Draco Meteor. And then the downside of Draco Meteor doesn't actually apply because you're always critting and it ignores your own stat drop. Uh, you should be swift swimming. But, <laughs> you can try sniping, it's kind of fun, uh, but don't expect to actually win the game because of that, it's just a neat trick you can try. I'll try critting, that's a neat trick. Also, look at all these water types that are sniping. Maybe they can also use Jurati! <laughs> and no, I don't think any snipers actually have the guaranteed crit moves, which is kind of unfortunate. Snow Cloak. This is a clone of Sand Veil, but uh, if it's cold, uh, if you're in hail, this gives you uh, an evasion boost, I think 20%. I think this ability is actually banned, uh, not because it's that powerful, but just because it makes battles an RNG fiesta. Uh, getting 20% evasion is very useful, uh, but again, it's not reliable. All that really happens with Snow Cloak is that occasionally your opponent will miss, and instead of killing you because you're an ice type, they just lose the game to whatever you are doing. Very fun and balanced and skillful. Not really. I hate evasion. Before he was the former president, he was a former weatherman, Obama Snow, issuing snow warnings. So everybody knows that hail is the worst weather, but weather is still pretty powerful, and they added a certain move called Aurora Veil, which is very fair and balanced. By fair and balanced, I mean overpowered. So Snow Warning, I think, is definitely Mon-defining. There are Pokemon you would use, teams you would build, just because of Snow Warning. And when I say Pokemon you would use, I mean Alolan Ninetales. But I mean, when you add a Pokemon that has the best secondary type ever, and is decently fast, and can use one of the best moves in the game, Aurora Veil. I think all of that is enough to get Snow Warning up to the very bottom of Mon Defining. And it's true, in Japan, there is an entire town named Obama. It means small beach. So unfortunately, no more snow puns there, but it just means small beach. Solar Power. In sunlight, you get 50% more special attack. That's good. And for some reason, I just cannot fathom other than Game Freak continuing to hate Sun, it also hurts you. You get an anti-poison heal, you lose an eighth of your health per turn. Why? Is this ability really so strong that there has to be a penalty attached to it? The penalty is, it has to be sunny. And meanwhile, Chlorophyll gives you double speed, no drawback. Swift Swim gives you double speed, no drawback. Why does this hurt you? I, I just don't understand. Like, the anti-sun bias is real. That being said, it's very powerful. You definitely would take the damage, but I don't know why you have to. It also sucks that the Pokemon that have solar power and are actually worth using, so not the grass types, uh, meaning Charizard and uh, Houndoom, they're also weak to Stealth Rock, so they're especially vulnerable to chip damage. This is why we can't have renewables, right? You can install those solar panels, but then you're taking an eighth of your health per turn. I guess we're just gonna stick with fossil fuels. Throw those dome fossils in the blender. We need energy. Stall. 
I think the most boring character from Fire Emblem Awakening, which is really saying something because pretty much every character is just one note with no personality. What's Stahl's personality? Oh, I can cook. Wow. And my outfit looks like half of a toilet. Incredible. What a great character. Truly, this game saved the franchise. Uh, in America, stalls sort of have this incredibly wide gap in them, bathroom stalls, that makes them pretty useless as a device for privacy. Why do we even have these? We should probably talk about the ability, right? Enough stalling. Horrible. It's so bad. So what does stall actually do? It's the signature move of Sableye. So what stall causes you to do is move second, but within your priority bracket. I, I don't know why you would ever want to do this. So the moves that care about moving second, so like counter and mirror coat, well, they already have minus six priority, so they're going to be going second anyway. I think the only possible use for this is... Say you've somehow statused your opponent, you've afflicted them with the toxic, and you're trying to stall them out, and you want to use recover, but you're at full health. So if you have stall, then your opponent will hit you, and then you recover, so you don't waste recover. But Sableye has piss speed anyway, so you're gonna be going second almost no matter what. You know what's better than recovering second? Recovering first! And we know this because Sableye has both Stall and Prankster and nobody uses Stall ever! Awful! This is almost Reggie Gigas tier! But at least most of the time, it just does nothing because you're slow anyway. Steadfast! If you get flinched, ah! You get faster. Is that good? I guess. I'd rather just not get flinched, right? I, I'd rather have inner focus, because that also prevents intimidate, because why not? But with Steadfast, uh, I mean, it's got faster than the name, right? You get a little bit faster, but you also lose your turn. So, I don't know. You also, of course, can't actually control getting flinched, right? Your opponent has to flinch you, and you don't know if they're gonna do that. I guess in doubles, where fake out is a lot more prevalent, this does make opponents think twice about trying to, trying to fake you out. Uh, because then they'll make you faster, which they probably don't want to do. I guess the point of Steadfast is that your opponent has to be faster to even flinch you, right? So if they flinch you and then you get the Steadfast boost, you'll then probably be faster than them, which means they can no longer flinch you. And the most reliable flinching move is Fake Out, which has plus three priority anyway. Sad. Storm Drain! So this used to have Yu-Gi-Oh! wording, where it was basically just lightning rod, right? It redirects water attacks to you, but you still take the damage. That was pretty bad, but they gave it a big buff in Gen 5. So now it draws water attacks to you and it absorbs them and you get a plus one special attack boost. That's a lot of good stuff. Uh, it protects your partner and uh, being immune to water is much better than just resisting it because it means you can stop Pokemon like Kyogre or Dracovish who just do such overwhelming damage that resistance is not enough. Storm Drain, very good. Uh, we're gonna put it all the way up here. It's a very, very strong effect. Uh, this basically is why you would use Gastrodon because Gastrodon's pretty underwhelming otherwise, but it's not like Gastrodon dominates the game. It's just a very specific counter to Pokemon because of Storm Drain. Very good. I guess we'll put it next to Dry Skin because it's, so, it's sort of similar and uh, water immunity is very nice. Super Luck. So this gives you a passive plus one increase to your critical hit rate. Uh, for all the reasons we talked about with a uh, Sniper, uh, crit strategies are not that good uh, because they nerfed crits, but they didn't really buff crit abilities. But hey, Super Luck does help you get to reliable crits. I think if you're using Super Luck, and a high crit rate move, like Night Slash, I think you're at like 50% crit. So 50% chance to do 150% damage. So on average, your crit moves deal 25% more damage. That's okay. It's very marginal. At least unlike Shell Armor, where you don't actually see that a crit was negated, uh, you of course do get to see when you crit. So you can be like, oh, okay, I probably got a crit because of super luck. That, that's okay. You can see that this ability helps you a bit. Justice for crits. I think they should be better. And I think this also has the compound eyes effect of if your lead Pokemon has super luck, it increases the rate at which wild Pokemon hold items. So it's useful for that if you're hunting for items. Tangled Feet, very weird ability. So if you're confused, it doesn't actually raise your evasion. It cuts your opponent's 
accuracy. I was really surprised when I looked this up because I thought this would be like Snow Cloak or something where it was just like, ah, 20%. But no, are, are you ready for this? While a Pokemon with this ability is confused, all moves used against it have their accuracy halved. Wow, that's actually a huge boost. These Pokemon get it? Okay, well, I'm not impressed. <laughs> So how do these Pokemon actually confuse themselves? I, I don't know, I guess you could use the berries that confuse you if you don't like the flavor. And then you're confused and your opponent might not hit you. Uh, you can thrash with Dodrio, so at the end of the thrash, you're gonna be confused. If Berserk Gene still existed, uh, you could get a free Swords Dance when you switch in and then your opponents have a 50% chance to miss you, but you also have a 30% chance to attack yourself. So, I mean, it's just gonna be an RNG fiesta. Will it actually be a fun fiesta? I'm not so sure. I think we'll, we'll say it's not useless. Maybe remove the feet part, and then you have a pretty decent movie, and maybe the best level in Kingdom Hearts 3, which isn't saying much. What a disaster that game was. Uh, all right, ma'am. Well, I took a look at your system, and I determined the issue to be that you're still alive. Whoosh! This build is crazy. Technician? Good! <laughs> Super good! What does Technician actually do? So it increases the power of all moves up to base 60 power by 50%. So all of your weak moves get 50% stronger. And usually these weak moves have some sort of advantage, which is why they're weak. But now they're not weak. So now you're dead. Incredible. Uh, this ability single-handedly took Scizor from a Pokemon that existed to a Pokemon that existed on every single team in Gen 4. Like, you basically had 50% less health because the moment you dropped below 50% health or around then, Scizor would just show up and kill you and there was nothing you could do about it. Disgusting. <laughs> so this is incredibly good with priority moves because priority moves are all weak but they get to go first, so when they're no longer weak, wow, uh, even Scyther, despite not being a steel type, hits you twice with the wing beat. It's a dual wing beat and you're dead. Pretty much any Pokemon that has technician strongly considers running it. And then you strongly consider running that Pokemon because technician is pretty good. Berloom gets technician and definitely uses it. You get an obscenely powerful mock punch and Technician Bullet Seed, uh, if you're skilled enough, I guess, you can't have Skill Link and Technician, but if you get enough hits, it deals massive damage. And even the average result of only three hits is still really, really strong because each individual hit of 25 gets 50% stronger. So even though it's a grass move, it actually ends up being pretty devastating. And you get Technician Rock Tomb. Berloom's a pretty good Technician. Yes, and a couple of people have mentioned that certain moves actually get nerfed by having their base power increased. Because Low Sweep is a move that Berloom used to use when it was 60 base power, but they buffed it to 65, and now it no longer gets a technician boost, which means it's worse. Tinted Lens! Pretty good ability! So what Tinted Lens does uh, is prevent you from seeing anything on the list, so I'm gonna pull these up, uh, and it doubles the damage of your resisted moves. A lot of the Pokemon that have this are like bugs that have uh, like tinted eyes. So it's basically as if you weren't a bug type with crappy moves. <laughs> it basically lets you use your bug stab as if you had a better type, which is really powerful. So I think we're gonna put it like up here-ish. Uh, if you've got those tinted lens, you're probably gonna strongly consider using that. Yeah, the best tinted lens user is definitely Yan Mega. So the strongest tinted lens user is definitely Yan Mega, but it has another ability that's pretty good. Uh, Sigilif could make good use of it, but it's got another ability that's pretty good. So the strongest Pokemon that's actually using tinted lens is probably Venomoth. That's disappointing. Unaware. I think most players are aware of how strong this ability is. It's incredibly strong. So what Unaware does is that it allows you to ignore all the stat boosts of your opponents. Generally, this means ignoring their offensive boosts when they're attacking you, but it also lets you ignore their defensive boosts when you're attacking them. Honestly, this might actually be Mon defining. Uh, SCP-036 is got some very good options. How do you lose most games? 
it's because your opponent increases their stats and you can't deal with it. When you have unaware, you can deal with it. <laughs> I also think this ability is just hilarious from a flavor perspective because you have your opponent going crazy, like hyping themselves up, dancing with swords, doing the dragon dance, and then they unleash their ultimate attack on you. You just don't care. Like, huh? Did you do something? Hello? <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. Uh, rather, it's it's Clefable, I guess. Blissy doesn't get this ability. So Quagsire also unaware of how bad its own stats are, and it just pops up sometimes as a very specific counter to very powerful Pokemon that Quagsire, for some reason, <laughs> ends up being able to beat. Imagine being so powerful that you're banned from the ban tier, except you can't beat one damp boy. <laughs> Well, I guess he's not damp, he's unaware. Unburden. This is Rock Lee's favorite ability. So, unburden. When you lose your item, uh, it doubles your speed. So, it basically adds agility uh, to whatever move you were using that got rid of your item. That's a very strong effect. Uh, so, do note, you have to actually lose your item. You can't just start with no item. It pairs very well with Fake Out and Normal Gem. Boop. That basically lets you agility for free because your opponent didn't get to act. You can also pair it with fling, I, I, I guess, or I think most commonly just a pinch berry, right? You can substitute down to your pinch berry, you get the pinch berry boost, and then you get faster because of unburden. Plus two speed is an excellent buff to get, and there's definitely ways to set up. You can do Hawlucha with uh, one of the seeds that gets consumed on terrain. So just be on a team that has terrain, have the seed, and suddenly, you've removed your burdens, and you're flying at plus two speed. Pairs well with a weakness policy, because assuming you don't die, then uh, you're actually moving fast and hitting hard. That's really strong. Also notable, this pairs extremely well with acrobatics, uh, because acrobatics powers up if you have no item, and Unburden also wants you to have no item. This was also an ability on the Pavrier class in Final oh. Fantasy Tactics Advanced 2 where it would kill you and then heal your whole team because definitely a skill I want on an offensive class is one that kills me and supports the rest of my team. No, I don't want to unburden my soul, but I will unburden in Pokemon. It's pretty good. Ripperoni flying gem acrobatics unburden. You, you, I don't know if you'll be missed, but you will be remembered. Great news, everyone. If each hour of the stream was one turn, then Regigigas is finally free because it took us slightly over five hours. <laughs> All right, so this is our Pokemon Gen 4 abilities tier list. You can see it and I hope you have tinted lens because apparently this hurts a lot of people's eyes. Sorry, I'll change the font color next time. I think this is the fourth time I'm apologizing for this and yet it's not enough apologies. I think one of the takeaways from this is that a lot of the abilities they added are pretty good. There's not many duds, aside from this one which is intentionally bad, and these which are like, what are, you, what are you doing? But most of them have at least some sort of effect. I would say Gen 4 build is pretty good overall.